So with Swedenborg, he, you talk about someone who's having a lot of experiences. Swedenborg got to the point where he was having them so often that he could write enough that you could make an entire web show where you talked for an hour every week about them. That's what we did. And yet, he had to have something that kicked it off, right? What we're going to listen to here is a reading of Sweden, what could be called Swedenborg's spiritually transformative experience. So this happened in a period where he had been doing a lot of work, putting in a lot of spiritual work, meaning that he was pursuing what you would call spiritual growth, or we could call it personal growth. It's not necessarily that mystical. It's trying to be a better person, uh, push back the negative human tendencies, follow your religious devotion. He was trying to really make this connection with God and, and see something greater. And he was journaling. He had a, that's now published as Journal of Dreams. And this was an experience he had where it really, things switched into a new gear here. So this is Swedenborg's notes. Uh, this is not something he published that was found afterwards. So it's pretty raw, which is nice. This is, this is what he went through, uh, a very special experience that he had. At 10 o'clock, I went to bed and felt a little better. After half an hour, I heard some racket under my head, but then I thought that the tempter left me. Immediately, a shiver came over me, starting from my head and spreading throughout my body, and I also heard some rumbling coming in waves, and I realized that something holy had come over me. I actually fell asleep. And about 12 o'clock at night, or maybe it was 1 or 2 in the morning, such a strong shivering seized me from head to toe, like thunder produced by several frontal systems colliding, shook me beyond description, and threw me down on my face. And when I was prostrated in this way, I was clearly awake, and I saw that I'd been thrown down. I was wondering what this was supposed to mean, And I spoke as if I was awake, but I found that the words were actually put into my mouth. And I said, You, Almighty Jesus Christ, who of your great mercy has seen fit to come to so great a sinner, make me worthy of this grace. And I clasped my hands together, and I prayed. And then a hand came forth between my hands, and it pressed my hands firmly. In a little while, I continued my prayer, and I said, You have promised to give grace to all sinners. You cannot do otherwise than keep your word. In that same moment, I found myself sitting in his lap, and I looked at him face to face. There he was, a countenance of this holy appearance. All was of a manner that I cannot even describe. He was smiling at me. And I was convinced that that's what he looked like when he was alive. He spoke to me and asked if I have a health certificate. And to this I replied, Lord, you know better than I do. And he said, well then, do it. And that is, as I inwardly grasped it, do love me or do what you have promised. God, give me grace to do it. I found it at that moment beyond my power and I woke up shuddering. We just dropped there in the middle of an entry, actually. So if you want to read more of that story, there's the before and after. Look up Swedenborg's Journal of Dreams. You can get it at Swedenborg.com. Now, you may or may not have noticed near the end that Swedenborg is saying that he's face-to-face with God, and God says to him, do you have a health certificate? And I'm going to tell you in brief this story. Why did God say that to him? This goes back to Swedenborg, when he was younger, before he had had any spiritual experiences, he's just a scientist and, and, you know, guy trying to get his education, doing all this stuff, right? He was on a boat going from one part of Europe to another. And when the boat got into the harbor, they all had to stay on. There was a quarantine because there was disease. I think it was the plague was going on. And so they had to make sure that nobody in, on the ship had the disease before they let him out. Swedenborg, you, you noticed in there that he was like, oh, I'm such a sinner. He had some, he was a bit of a hothead. He, when he was younger, I mean, he thought he was really cool because he was so smart. And he thought, like, I don't need to put up with this. So he actually jumped ship, as it was called. Like, he snuck out of the ship into the town, and he got caught. And they knew, hey, you you snuck out before the quarantine was over. You could have gotten us all sick. So he actually, they actually put him on jail, and I think he was facing death there. Uh, but he ha- had some connections, so he called people. They pulled a few strings, and 
they got him out, right? Uh, the point is, when God shows up, God says to him, do you have a clean bill of health? He's referencing that episode in his life, which I think is fascinating, okay? Needless to say, an experience like that was not like it redirected Swedenborg. He had already, by that point in his life, was on this path of trying to, you know, do what was right and, and, and seek what was higher. But that was a big, that was sort of one of the major opening points, or, you know, like, this is when the gates started to really open. He started to go into his his fully spiritual phase that we pull these quotes from when we read them here. So thought you might think that was interesting. <laughs>